Is this gonna be safe? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, you can fit. It's definitely safe. Built it sturdy. Texan boy so Gabe Dean describes oh, a charmed God. childhood. Good at basketball, popular at school. How was work today? It was good. Yeah. Not too busy. But the first time he tried to get intimate with his present girlfriend, Jordan, really trouble uh, struck. Well, we uh, had a nice night on the town out in Dallas, and we went back to the hotel, and um, I asked her to get in the shower with me, and I was ready to, you know, go into sexual activity. And as we were getting ready to do it, I couldn't feel any arousal. And so we tried some things that typically have historically turned me on, some of my favorite things, and nothing that we tried did anything. And so I was freaked out because I was very attracted to her. The same thing was happening to Adam in Wellington. So at age 17, I had another girlfriend, and at that point we went to have sex and uh, nothing happened. I didn't have a physical response at all. So the real thing just didn't do it for you no. anymore? Didn't, didn't at all. If I'd seen her on a screen, I would probably have more of a physical reaction than seeing her in real life. But Adam and Gabe had no problem getting an erection behind a computer. So what was wrong? Could all the porn they'd been watching have done something to their brains? Now there's the nerve, you see it right there. Don Hilton's been peering inside people's heads for 21 years, a brain surgeon in San Antonio, a world expert on this stuff. I think there's ample evidence that pornography rewires the brain in a very dramatic fashion. Four years ago, Don put forward the controversial theory that internet porn could be as addictive as cocaine. We predicted that based on the way sex causes these reward chemicals in the brain to uh, be produced, that we would see some of the same brain scan findings that we find with drugs. And the latest research seems to be proving him right. At Cambridge University, they scanned the brains of 19 compulsive porn users and 19 healthy men while watching explicit internet pornography. Researchers wanted to know what would happen to their reward centres. That's the part of the brain which lights up when we do the things we enjoy, like eating or having sex. It's fueled by packets of dopamine. And they turn it on. And they make that cell say, this is pleasure, this is rewarding. I want this, this feels good. And it rewards our brain, it gives us a, a buzz. While the control group got a little buzz from the porn, the reward centers of the porn users lit up like Christmas trees, just like the scans of cocaine addicts. They wanted more and they wanted it now. An individual that's addicted to porn, just as one that's addicted to cocaine, experiences a, a, a sensitization or an overshoot. And when they see a cue for uh, cocaine or porn, then their brain over responds as opposed to someone that is not addicted. I never considered myself addicted back in the day, but now I can clearly see that yes, I was an addict. I was constantly craving porn. I was turning down real life sexual opportunities and I eventually got to the point where I was dependent on porn to function normally. There are still academics out there who say there's no such thing as porn addiction. It's just people with high libidos doing their thing. Do you think that porn addiction has been proven beyond doubt? To me, the proof has been there for several years. A study out of Germany, it showed that... There and last year, more supporting evidence. The Max Planck Institute in Germany identified two physical changes in the brains of internet porn users. First, a rewiring of the frontal lobe, the part of the brain that tells us to stop overindulging, our braking system. It's essentially wearing out of the braking system. It's impeding the signal from the brake to the reward center. So the brake doesn't work as well. So you're driving your car towards porn heaven and the brakes just aren't working. You've, you've worn out the brake pads. The second and most stunning neurological discovery that high-speed internet porn 
might actually shrink the brain. This change in volume, the shrinkage in this reward area, was more pronounced the more hours per week the person watched pornography. And that means less grey matter in the part of the brain associated with decision making and motivation. It makes sense of Adam's symptoms. Complete lack of motivation for anything in life. Um, apart from porn? Yeah, apart from porn. There's a third aspect of this emerging science which is even more worrying from a social point of view. The more porn you watch, the more extreme your brain wants it to be. Something that I would have been incredibly fascinated at age 12 was just having no response in my brain at that time, so I had to seek out uh, how to hit. So he needs more. The same porn isn't going to do it. It's going to require a bigger kick. It started out very softcore, you know, with uh, me Googling body parts, right? And then it would escalate to, um, you know, a couple guys, one girl, or gang bangs. And then it got, it kind of, you know, varied what I would watch. And I would search for things that were shocking or that created anxiety, um, like very abusive and misogynistic stuff. But why would our brains do that to us? Novelty. Novelty, our brains want to learn something new. We're always trying to learn something new. It's what we, it's what we do. Our brains want to learn. And we need new, and new is aggression. New is younger. 